Hi, and welcome to Applied Machine Learning. My name is Vladimir Kuleshov, and I'm a professor in the Computer Science Department at Cornell Tech and Cornell University. And I'm going to be the instructor for this course. In this first lecture, I would like to give you a broad overview of the course and uh, tell you about the different kinds of topics that we are going to be exploring and why I think they're both very interesting and important and useful to learn. In this first video, in this first part of the lecture, I want to start with uh, a definition of what machine learning is. I personally think that machine learning is one of today's most exciting emerging technologies and one of the most interesting fields of study. Machine learning is today having a big impact on products and technologies, as well as on society and on policy making. And in this course, you will learn what machine learning is, what are the most interesting and important tools and techniques in the field of machine learning, and also how to apply these tools and techniques to solve important real-world problems. And to begin this discussion, I want to highlight three snippets from uh, the news, from the media, from the last several years. Um, here on the left-hand side, uh, I have a snippet from the MIT Tech Review. Uh, in 2013, the MIT Tech Review named Deep Learning, which is a form of machine learning, as one of that year's most important uh, breakthrough technologies. And in the years since, machine learning has had an impact on many fields of science and on many types of applications. In the middle here, uh, I have highlighted the cover of Nature from several years ago. And on the cover here, you have, uh, it, it shows an algorithm that was developed by Google DeepMind several years ago. And this is an algorithm for playing the game of Go. This was an important breakthrough because for the first time, this algorithm was able to beat the world's best player in Go, which is a feat that was previously thought to be decades away. And this is just an example of the kinds of uh, scientific and technological breakthroughs that have, been, uh, that have been made possible by the rapid pace of advances in this field over the last several years. And then finally, on the right here, I have a snippet from Wired magazine in which, uh, which featured an interview with Barack Obama on the topics of artificial intelligence, machine learning, job automation. And this is just to show you that machine learning is not only leading to important technological breakthroughs, but it's also influencing policy at the highest possible levels. So machine learning has been widely covered in the news uh, in the last uh, several years, but what is machine learning really? Uh, let me start with a few examples. First, if you have, um, if you have used uh, certain simple tools today, you have almost certainly relied on machine learning. For example, if you have used a search engine to access this course material, then you have relied on machine learning to, uh, to find this information. For example, when you entered a query into the search engine, it used machine learning to better understand the meaning of your query, and then it used machine learning on the back end to retrieve the information that was most relevant to your query. If you have a smartphone with you, then again, you are almost certainly using machine learning. Uh, many features of your smartphone rely on this technology, but one particular that I want to highlight is the personal assistant capability. For example, Apple Siri or Google Assistant. When you speak into these uh, personal assistants, 
the system uses machine learning to transform your voice into a sequence of words or characters, then again it uses machine learning to better understand the meaning of your, uh, of your sentences, and it, then it uses machine learning to retrieve the information that is relevant to you, for example, the photos in this example. Uh, if you used email today, then again you relied on machine learning for uh, spam filtering. This is an example of my own spam folder and I have uh, I didn't have to manually triage all these relevant emails because a machine learning algorithm was able to do this automatically for me. And furthermore, machine learning systems are used by credit card companies and banks to detect uh, various forms of fraudulent behavior uh, and if you didn't have any, mm, uh, if you didn't have any fraudulent behavior on your credit card account, then that is also in uh, in, a, in in a, in large part to uh, due to the existence of intelligent machine learning algorithms. And finally, the last application or the last example that I want that I want to highlight uh, is one that is uh, emerging but that I think is very promising and uh, that promises to have even more impact than uh, all the other examples that I gave earlier. And this application is in the field of, is in the area of self-driving cars. Uh, self-driving cars are an important uh, new technology that is uh, built on the foundations of, uh, that are provided by machine learning. And it's a new technology that promises to have a huge impact on our lives, um, on one hand, by providing mobility to people that would not have access to mobility otherwise, and more generally, by significantly improving the safety of vehicles uh, and by reducing the number of accidents on the road. So this is an example of the kinds of innovations that will be uh, that will be made possible by machine learning in the future. Now, I gave you a few examples, but how can we summarize all of these examples in a more succinct definition? Here, I would like to propose the following definition that is due to an early pioneer of machine learning called Arthur Samuel. Arthur Samuel uh, became famous for designing the first algorithm for playing the game of checkers by learning from playing against itself. So this was an early application of machine learning to board games uh, and this paved the way for algorithms like the ones that I just described earlier for playing the game of Go. Uh, he laid the foundation for these algorithms many years ago. The definition that he gave is the following. Machine learning is a field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Now this is a very precise definition, but some, uh, some words here may not be very clear to you. In particular, what does learn mean in this context, and what does explicitly programmed mean? To make this more precise, let me again uh, go to an example. The example I want to give you uh, comes from self-driving cars and uh, this, is, this here is a screenshot from a presentation that was given recently by Tesla on the new version of their uh, self-driving car system. One important piece of software or one important component of a self-driving car, uh, of a self-driving system, is object detection. Object detection means that if we, uh, if we have a camera that looks at the road, we want to detect what are the objects that, that it is seeing. Here we have an example of the output that we would get from an object detection system, and this system has placed a, bounding, a red bounding box around this car, uh, another red bounding box around this other car, and then uh, a yellow bounding box around around the cyclist and it has identified them 
as being uh, elements that are present on the road. So to better understand machine learning, let's consider how we would build this kind of system. One way of building an object detection system is the classical approach to software engineering, which is to manually define a step-by-step -step procedure by which we can uh, detect these objects or make a decision about uh, what a particular object is. In this particular case, it may look like a set of rules for determining what the objects are. The set of rule may look something like the following uh, piece of uh, pseudocode. Here in this code, we are asking uh, the camera for an object, and then we look at the object, and first we ask the question of whether it has wheels. Well, if it has wheels, then it's probably either a car or a bicycle. And if it has four wheels, where, well, well then this has to be a car. Um, but now imagine if it has two wheels. Well, actually, if it has two wheels, um, then um, if you look at this car, then because we're looking at this car from the back, it also happens to have two wheels. And so we need to uh, make this uh, case a little bit more precise. We need to handle the edge case that, oh, well, if we're looking at an object from the back and it has two wheels, then it is probably a car. But if we're looking at it from the side, then uh, it is probably a bicycle. And then if we don't, if the object doesn't have wheels, then we don't know what it is. So this is a toy example uh, of how an object, detection, an object detection system might look like if we approach this problem in the classical way in which we build software. And I'm sure that you're able to, to quickly realize that this classical software engineering approach in which we handle all the different cases uh, and we procedurally define a set of rules uh, by which the system works, this approach does not scale. All the kinds of different inputs that the car might see over its existence, uh, there, there, there is going to be too much complexity and too much richness in the inputs that the system will receive for us to be able to define the system manually or procedurally using a set of rules that handle all the edge cases. There will be simply too, there will be simply be too many edge cases. And this approach in practice simply does not scale to building actual production level uh, systems. Now let's contrast this with another approach which is based on machine learning. Now, the idea of, uh, of the machine learning approach to building software is instead of specifying the behavior of this system procedurally by hand via a set of rules, we instead collect a large data set that demonstrates the behavior that we want to see from the algorithm. And then in addition to that, we specify a short algorithm by which the computer can learn how to, uh, how to perform the necessary behavior from the data that it receives. So in the self-driving <clears throat> car example, we could collect a data set which, which could look as follows. This is another slide from the presentation by Tesla. And here we have a scene in which we have annotated the various objects on the road with different labels. Here we have the label for a pedestrian. Here we have a label for a vehicle. <clears throat> Here we have more vehicles and more pedestrians. And the idea is that if we provide the computer a sufficiently large data set of examples of uh, like, like these ones where we see pedestrians and cars, then by running a simple learning algorithm, the computer will be able to on its own detect the rules that characterize a pedestrian as a pedestrian and a vehicle as a vehicle. And as humans, we will only need to specify the data and the way by which the computer would learn. 
And now, using uh, this example, we can better understand the definition that was given to us by Arthur Samuel. Um, here we have uh, a particular example, so I guess here in this context, explicitly programmed would correspond to the first example where we uh, try to write the software ourselves by hand and the ability to learn. An example of that would be the machine learning approach to building an object detection system. Now, I gave this example in the context of self-driving cars, but this approach can be used to build state-of-the-art software in countless domains. In particular, uh, there's medical diagnosis where uh, we might want to classify the state of a patient, and we can do this by giving the computer many examples of how a healthy or a non-healthy patient looks like. Uh, factory automation or the automation of various indu various industrial processes, um, machine translation where uh, the computer learns to translate by observing a very large numbers a very large number of pairs of sentences uh, where the same sentence appears in two languages, and many many more applications in which this approach can be uh, applied. Now. Why is this particular approach to building software interesting? The first reason is a very practical one. In many real-world applications, this approach is the only way that we have to build performant state-of-the-art systems. Um, so to put it differently, we don't have any other way of building an object detection system that works well except uh, except for machine learning. So machine learning allows us to solve problems that we couldn't solve otherwise. Now machine learning is also really interesting from a more intellectual perspective. Uh, um, so on one hand it is considered to be a key approach towards building general purpose artificial intelligence systems. The goal of artificial intelligence is to build agents that can perform a wide range of tasks that we think require human intelligence. And it is generally believed that a crucial step for building these systems is to give them the ability to effectively learn. And uh, also from a slightly different perspective, by studying the science of machine learning, by studying how computer algorithms uh, and how machines can learn, we can also gain insight into the learning process of humans and we can better understand the principles of human intelligence. So machine learning is a very fascinating field and uh, again in this lecture I hope to give you an overview of machine learning and the kinds of topics that we're going to study and in the next video I would like to give you a few uh, more specific examples of certain approaches by which we can perform machine learning.